got a few quick thank yous. Uh, Crows boys, you're having a red hot crack. Love the way you go about it. Um, bad luck tonight, but thanks for the great fight. To our little posse down there behind the goals, thanks for making heaps of noise and everyone watching back home. Um, and my boys, well done tonight. Showdown wins a showdown win. Fuck yeah. What's going on, Port fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel. And today we're going to review Showdown 50. Port Adelaide getting the job done by four points in an absolute thriller at the Adelaide Oval in front of 15,000 people. It was a very interesting game, a, an emotional roller coaster, as the title suggests. And we're going to go through the, uh, the epic moments throughout the night. Some not so epic, but some that definitely made moments that will uh, hopefully set us up going into the final series. So let's get straight into it and review Showdown 50. I want to start this review with what's been the biggest topic over the last week. And it's got uh, ramifications of what came out of the game and also going into the game. And I need to get this uh, message across very clearly that racism does not stand in our game, it does not stand in the environment, it does not stand um, in any uh, atmosphere around the world. It is simply does not belong in our life. Uh, it, it, it is a disgusting act of disrespectful um, you know, claims and, and and everything that's associated with it is just you know not equal. It's not right and it's disgusting that we have to continually put this message out. Um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an ever-changing world where, you know, these people are getting away with things that are just simply not acceptable in today's lifestyle. The claims that um, this person made about Aaliyah, Aaliyah winning the showdown medal, making a fake account, and going all to, all to that trouble to make a disrespectful comment to him after what a wonderful game he played, it should not overshadow the performance that he put out. He saved Port Adelaide Saturday night. He single-handedly got us um, and kept us in the game and got us over the line with his continual great play and the reading of the play and also his ability to set us up from the defensive unit that everything else seemed to struggle with throughout the night. In a night that was so dim in terms of what possible light could be shown on the game and you know it's, it's, it's a game that we probably won't want to remember for a while, in the in the scheme of things, Showdown 50 was an epic to the neutral fans. To Port Adelaide fans, it was disgusting. It was not something you would watch. It was pathetic for three quarters. And quite frankly, I'm never going to watch it again, never going to speak about it again. But essentially, we wanted to celebrate a guy that played a wonderful performance, was able to win his team a game of football on his own boot. And the way he played was exceptional. And for that alone, to win the Showdown medal in his first year at Port Adelaide, playing his second Showdown... To have that overshadowed because of this dickhead who's come out and made this account and really taken away what, uh, what it was a fantastic performance by Aaliyah Lear is piss poor. It's, it's so many words to combine that with and I'm, it makes me sad, it makes me emotional and it makes me feel like that no one is learning. No one is doing the right thing and when you've got people... And the accusations are going towards Tex Walker and coming out and you know everything that's happened. You know, a leader of football, it just makes it so much more disappointing that these people think it's okay to do something that someone did and they made a mistake. Why do people feel they need to go make a mistake that someone did and they have to learn from it? Tex is dealing with the consequences. Why can't this person have consequences go his way? It's disgusting. It's as simple as that. And if I see any comments on you know any videos... Uh, of mine that are disrespectful, that are abusive, that are harmful to the person that they're commenting to, or to even myself. You know, Saturday night I received some very, um, very emotional. They, they, they. These comments that were directed towards me because of my comments during the game on Twitter and on social media. Um, they got to me. They rattled me. And I'm not trying to make this about myself because I'll accept these comments and they come part and parcel with challenging an opinion. Of someone else and that's fine. I know I'm entitled to my opinion, I express my opinion and I'll own my opinion. But when it comes to being a personal attack because of a comment I've made or uh, a comment a fan's made because it doesn't agree with someone else, that's when people got to start to rethink what they say to others because it is it gets emotional. It becomes unsatisfying, it becomes 
you become unmotivated. And I love doing this. You know, I'm. I love Port Adelaide. I love being able to express my opinion, get everyone involved, and to create a community that we have at the moment and it continues to grow is something that I'm passionate about. And hopefully one day it becomes big enough that I can combine so many different passions of mine into one. And and everyone's support has been such uh, an amazing journey, and it's so I'm so grateful for that. But for to get these comments was. Um, yeah, it's 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 not right, and um, I take it on the chin. I move on. I, it rattled me. It still probably does rattle me a little bit, but for these comments to be made more so to earlier, and you know the the ones that text made, and everyone that keeps making these comments online, no matter who it's to, who it is to, or the motivation behind it, it's not acceptable. And I really hope that everyone that does watch this and does see this message, really thinks about what they do, do post on social media. And I hope we can learn from it. Anyway, into the game. Not much to be said about the game. Other than it was very reminiscent of the Collingwood game at the MCG earlier in the year. Which was unsatisfying to watch. But the satisfying thing was that we got the four points. We got the job done. And now we're equal top at the moment of this recording. Melbourne to, and West Coast still to play. But we're top four basically locked in. Barring a, a, an unexpected loss to Carlton. And a drubbing to the Bulldogs in the last game. It, it, it is such a crucial thing now that we're in this position that we lock away top four and if we lock away top four we've got a second chance and anything can happen in finals and what to me Saturday night suggested is under extreme pressure and extreme heat against a gallant Adelaide Crows outfit who we knew were going to come out and prove something I didn't think it was going to be for the whole game I knew they'd come out strong in the first quarter but to sustain that level of you know, aggression and and pressure for the four quarters I give a massive credit to Adelaide because they were fantastic and some of the young guns are really going to be uh, ones to watch in the future, i.e. Schoenberg. Um, Fogarty was good. You know, and, and you've got Rory Laird still playing an absolute star role. Butts was amazing on Dixon and Murray. And, and all of these players were just hard at the footy. It was a great showdown. It was Because Saturday night was something that, even though we wanted a 10-goal, we, we wanted to get that percentage booster. I'm thinking we've had so many chances to have percentage boosters throughout the year. And... I was one of them. I wanted this to be a percentage boosting game. It didn't turn out that way. And now that I think about it a little bit more and review the game a little bit, I start to think that maybe we needed this game to really test the pressure uh, limit for us. You know, if we crack under pressure. And we, we, we did crack under pressure at times, but we were able to be resilient enough. And for two minutes of football, but we, that's all we basically played was two minutes of football, to get across the line... It, it, it shows that we're, we've learnt to win. We, we know how to win. And when it comes to finals, that is so crucial. And even though it's against bottom sides, bottom 10 sides, when it comes to that moment where we need to beat a top side and we've got everything on the line and we're so resilient, these are the learning learnings that we can take into that. And maybe, just maybe, when it comes to finals, it's what gets us across the line. We might be able to play two, three quarters of footy, but they'll be coming that moment where we're under the pre under the pump. The pressure is immense, and we're playing against a Bulldogs outfit that are coming at us. They kick two or three in a row. They're about to extend their lead, and we know how to be resilient. We know how to stick to what we deal with, and we're able to finish the job, which that's, that's the lesson I took from Saturday night. Barring it was a shit showdown. I, in terms of being a neutral fan, it was an awesome showdown to watch. Little bits of play that really stood out for me. And Connor Rosie's game, he had 16 touches. Um, he, I think he kicked the goal, I'm not 100%, but you know the, the plays that he made, the, the reading of the play, the, the last quarter goal that helped set up Power Pepper, and even then in Power Pepper's, Power Pepper's instance, he was able to have that second, third, and fourth efforts. And it was these players that stood up. Boke and Wines did their jobs in the midfield, and you'd expect that. And Alir Alir was fantastic down back, and he won the showdown medal as he deserved. Um, to have these little moments where we were able to stick it to, um, stick it together really, that's, and keep, um, you know, get away with murder in this instance is something that I'm extremely pleased with. And to have moments that Rosie stood up, Butter stood up, uh, Drew stood up, um, and then as I said, Sam Power Pepper, who I've questioned his role on the side, and 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 it when he provides that pressure and provides that um, demand of the footy. That's when he's at his best, and he was great in those patches on the on Saturday night. So, and then you got like little taps and little setups by Robbie Gray, and you know it's just these little moments that link together, and it doesn't have to be perfect. 
But you know, in the scheme of things, I love a four quarter performance. I love an eighty point win over uh, over the over the Crows, and it was going to go two ways. It was either going to go that they were going to come out firing and give us the game that we got, or we were going to drop them by ninety points, and we'll be singing happy, you know, happy songs and being all up and about because we just beat the Crows by ninety points, and we can pay the shit out of all their supporters. Which look. Some of you still have because we're winning the showdown. We've won four in a row. It's 26-24 in the ledger. But for me, I, I don't don't want to brag about the winning. Like I'm very happy that we won. But to have that performance in the scheme of our season, it, it means a little bit more in that aspect because we were able to get the job done under extreme pressure in conditions that you know we haven't been suited to for a while. Played at Marvel for a month. We were in quarantine for basically the week and we were able to do the job. And that for me is a massive tick with the resilience of this group. And I can't fault that. I can fault individual performances and all of this. And I can point out everything that was wrong with the game or take a positive spin on it and really drive that point because it's a fact. It's a true fact that what we've had to deal with for the last month has been absolutely demanding and the resilience off the field has been great on the field. It's showing, and when it comes into the last two, last these last two games, look, I think we'll beat Carlton, and I hope we beat the Bulldogs and get a top two finish, and we can play at home. We can have that week off, and we'll be refreshed. Whatever happens from here, though, I'm very much satisfied with where we're at. We will make top four. We will play finals, and we'll give it a red hot crack. And to win Showdown 50 and launch into the final series, that's a tick for me. That's an absolute tick for me. Barring how it was performed and how the result ended up on paper. It doesn't tell me how we played. It just tells me we won. Well, that's it, Port fans. That is my review of Showdown 50. Let me know in the comments below uh, what you thought of the game. Um, and let me know what you're thinking for the rest of the season. So it's going to be great. Finals are pretty much upon us in a couple of weeks' time. Two games to go. We're back at home again against the Carlton Footy Club. Don't know when that game will be played, but the, pre the preview for that one will come out later in the week. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content. Almost at 4K. A couple of people. That's it. That's it. It's just a couple of people. So sign up. Get in. Get on board. I'm going to have a big final series. Big back end of the year. Thank you for watching. My name is Anthony. And as always, come a pair.